In this video, we'll be taking a look at the top 5 best point and shoot cameras on the market this year. Like always, we try to include products that could work for someone on a strict budget all the way up to experienced professionals. So, whether you're looking for something cheap or looking for professional grade camera equipment, we'll have an option for you on this list. So, if you want to find out the best point and shoot cameras, be sure to stay tuned. Just to mention, all of the links to all of the products mentioned in the video will be in the description down below. These cameras do tend to go on sale, so be sure to check out those links for updated pricing on all the products mentioned. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on post notification to stay up to date with the latest in-camera gear as well as tips and tricks for photography and video. With all of that out of the way, let's get into the video. First up on our list, we have the best point and shoot camera for vlogging the Canon PowerShot G7 X Mark II. Its features include a max aperture of f1.8-2.8, 20 megapixels, a BSI-CMOS sensor, it has a max resolution of 5472 by 3648 and it includes 1,040,000 screen dots. The G7 X Mark II lens is at a more modest 4.2 times which is equivalent to around 24-100mm, in comparison to super zoom cameras which has 30 to 40 times zoom, it might seem paltry. But for most all purpose shooting scenarios this is more than enough. In fact, since it has more zoom scope than the classic 24-70mm lens, it's chosen by most professionals and enthusiasts. Another benefit of having a shorter lens is the ability to facilitate wider apertures. At its widest point, it's T f over 1.8 which rises to f over 2.8 at the maximum reach of the optic. This helps photographers make great shallow of depth field effects and opening the aperture so it can display more light in low light situations. The camera does give you the opportunity to boost its zoom capability via digital zoom. In fact, Canon gives you two levels of digital zoom here. Images that are taken at the first zoom point can be shared online. When it comes to the screen, the Canon G7 X Mark II is touch sensitive and displays good colors. Users can set their own AF point via tapping on the screen and navigating through the main menu and the quick menu. If you're showing videos through playback, you have to pinch to check focus and swipe through images. The G7 X Mark II has a sleek and intuitive design. There's a grip placed on the front of the camera that fits snugly on your hand. Placed on top of the camera is a dial that can move between exposure modes. Underneath is an exposure compensation dial that's reached via your thumb to make quick changes. All of the buttons are placed on the right hand side of the camera. This means that doing quick adjustments is a fast process. By default, it will be set to alter the aperture but you can change it to another option, ISO for instance. Mainly, we believe that the Canon PowerShot G7 X Mark II is perfect for vlogging. With over 20.1 megapixels, all of your images will have a clear and high res appearance. Since it offers up 1080p video recording, you can present your best face to your audience. Its pros include an improved photo quality, it is good for low light performance, and it has optical image stabilization. The cons are, there is no viewfinder and it has limited zoom range. Second on our list is the best point and shoot camera for beginners, the Fujifilm X100F. Its features include dial controlled ISO modes, an electronic viewfinder or hybrid optical, 35mm f2 lens, digital teleconceiver mode and a 24MP CMOS sensor. Ranked second on this list is the Fujifilm X100F. This camera has a 3.4 inch screen and over 1,040,000 dots. It has the rangefinder design as its predecessor but includes an ISO dial and an AF point joystick located on the top plate. One of the hallmarks of the Fujifilm X100F is its clear hybrid viewfinder. It helps photographers when shooting in electronic or optic modes. The electronic is rendered via the 2.36 million dots of OLED display. This gives you a complete view of exposure, composition, white balance and a multitude of other shooting information. The bright optical viewfinder creates a more traditional alternative. For instance, 
If you focus on more objects that are near your camera in optical mode, then its real-time parallax correction function will activate and adjust the frame guides for the optimal viewing. Also, the camera's standard ISO range covers 200 to 12,800, with its expanded range of 100 to 51,200. In fact, these expanded ranges are limited to just shooting JPEG images. Users can also take raw capture of their photos, resulting in a more professional finish. We also like the aperture ring of the Fujifilm X100F. There are two extrusions placed on the left and right hand sides of the lens of the camera. You can use the camera's focus ring, despite the short camera lengths. For beginners, you can simply set the camera on its autofocus setting. Another interesting benefit is its improved Wi-Fi settings. For example, users can connect to a Wi-Fi network and have access to Fuji's apps. This feature allows you to control the camera remotely and transfer images. Fuji's entire lineup is ergonomic and stylish. It's a part of their brand, but they have done something special when engineering the Fujifilm X100F. Its body is light, but it's substantial. The all-metal housing looks so durable and expensive, you'll find it hard putting it down. We believe that the Fujifilm X100F is a great point-and-shoot camera for beginners. Not only does the camera have a shutter dial that can rotate to about 360 degrees, but it also has over 24.3 MP, making your photos accurate and clear. So think about getting this product the next time you're out shopping. Third on our list is the best value per dollar point-and-shoot, the Panasonic Lumix ZS100. Its features include eye face detection, 49 point AF, 4K photo, post focus functions, has a 3 inch touchscreen LCD, and 1.2M dot equivalent EVF. Another important feature is that the Lumix ZS100 can record JPEGs and RAW files. This complements the manual exposure modes, shutter priority, aperture priority that come with the automated shooting options. Almost all of the Lumix's buttons were placed on the right hand side of the camera, which makes it easier to shoot with one hand. There are two large dials placed on the top of the camera. The first one is the exposure mode dial which helps you toggle through its different shooting modes. The second dial has different functions depending on the shooting setting. For instance, if you're taking pictures in aperture priority, you can use it to adjust the aperture or the shutter speed if the camera is in shutter priority. This is a convenient position for your thumb and has a good amount of stiffness when turning it. The ZS100 is filled with helpful features. Most notably is its electronic viewfinder, its enhanced depth from the defocus autofocus system, and supports 4K video capture, and it has a 3-inch touch-sensitive LCD screen. On average, it takes about 2.3 seconds to turn on the camera, take focus, and shoot. Focusing and taking shots in good lighting helps, taking only 0.1 seconds to take the shot. But in lower light settings, expect this to increase to about 0.6 seconds. If you want to take photos in full resolution, the ZS100 can fire shots at a rate of 10 frames per second. While it may not be as fast as a 4K photo, but JPG images and 20MP RAW have more versatility than 8MP. These numbers have a fixed focus. If you're trying to refocus on every shot, the burst rate is reduced to 6.1 frames per second. The ZS100 has a 20MP image sensor. When shooting JPG photos, it keeps the nose below 1.5% through the ISO 6400 setting. The noise reduction can take control over the image quality when the image is taken out that far. Basically, one should consider getting the Panasonic Lumix ZS100 for point-and-shoot photos. Since it's a smaller camera, the aperture size is good enough to take quick photos of the subject. And with its improved video quality, you won't have any problems taking Instagram quality photos using this device. The pros include a 10 times zoom range, it has high ISO performance, and it has JPG and RAW capture options. The cons are, it has small EVF, and the LCD screen is fixed. Fourth up on our list, we have the best budget point-and-shoot camera, the Canon PowerShot SX720HS. Its features include 20.3 megapixels, 40 times optical zoom, shutter speeds ranging from 1 to 1 3,200ths of a second, 3-inch LCD screen, and ISO 80 to 320. The Canon PowerShot SX720HS has a compact design, 
which is good considering that it has a 40 times optical zoom placed in its small body. You can slip the SX720HS in your pocket as long as you don't have tight clothes on. The Canon PowerShot SX720HS has a rubberized grip section located on the front where the middle finger rests. This helps the camera fit in your grip and gives the user confidence that the camera won't slip out of their hands. On the left side of the camera's top plate you will find its inbuilt flash, but when you're trying to use this you'll have to eject it from your camera's side. Underneath this switch you'll find a zoom frame assist button. This is a helpful feature, especially since this camera has functional features such as high optical zoom. Basically, if you're taking a photo of something when using the zoom feature and your subject moves out of the frame, you can hold down the zoom frame assist button. This will cause the zoom lens to zoom out, which helps photographers find their subject again. The overall detail is pretty good, especially when it's placed in low ISOs. If you increase the setting to ISO 1600, its immersion of detail is increased, but you'll see some image smoothing once you examine it at 100%. On the plus side, this noise is controlled due to the image smoothing and unless you're trying to print your photos in large sizes, which is somewhat unreasonable for a camera like this, you'll be pleased with the final results of your images. Unlike most entry-level digital cameras, this camera comes equipped with manual control options. This is great for beginners wanting to learn more about photography. You can take photos in automatic mode until you're confident at controlling the settings yourself. Another area where this Canon model shines is at its burst performance mode. This gives you the ability to shoot photos at the speed of 6 frames per second. This is a good burst speed for a basic point and shoot camera, but you can only record at this rate for a few seconds before the small memory buffer area is full. Basically, the Canon PowerShot SX720HS is great if you need a simple point and shoot camera. It takes shots at a speed of 6.3 frames per second and 20 megapixels for enhanced image quality. Try this if you're ready to make some interesting action shots. Fifth on our list is the best overall point and shoot, the Sony RX106. Its features include a 3-inch LCD touchscreen, 5-axis image stabilization, it has 1080p slow motion capture, 20.1 megapixels, and an 8x optical zoom. The Sony RX106 is the best overall point and shoot camera on this list. It allows you to shoot slow motion footage at a speed of 120 frames per second. With its wide aperture lens and large sensors, the RX100 is able to make some interesting images with blurred backgrounds. Like its predecessor, the Sony RX100 has an accurate and quick on phase sensor detection autofocus. Its ability to take shots at around 24 frames per second and it delivers 4K video that's taken from the sensor's width. The Sony RX100 is the first RX100 camera in its series to include a redesigned electronic viewfinder that can be stowed away or activated with the press of a button. Despite being less thicker than its predecessor, it can be used for more photographic situations. This makes the Sony RX106 better for travel than the previous model. We also like the camera's metal exterior. It has a black matte finish that doesn't have too many adornments. The Sony logo is placed at the top corner in all white, and the Zeiss badge placed at the bottom corner, the lens showing its branding as well. The RX100's function button opens an on-screen setting menu for additional options, and it has a micro USB port which is used for charging and data transfer. You can expect this camera to shoot around 240 images on a charged battery using its LCD. The camera's buffer can hold up around 231 JPG, 106 RAW plus JPG, and 108 RAW photos before the camera fills up. Performance-wise, the camera's speed is a definite advantage. It starts, focuses, and shoots in around 1.8 seconds, and it's able to lock in focus in bright areas and at 0.4 in dim conditions. Sony's D-Range Optimizer is great for making some advanced photo shoots. It works via analyzing the scene for dark and light areas and changing the exposure accordingly. You can either turn the setting off or select from levels 1 to 5. Basically, the Sony RX106 is a great all-purpose point-and-shoot camera. On average, it has a shot-to-shot -shot time of 0.7 seconds. Get this camera if you're ready to make high-quality photos while still being compact enough to hide in your pocket. Its pros include silent shooting options, 
the AF system can track motion and faces accurately and its selectable aspect ratios work with electronic finders. The cons include, it's unable to capture time-lapse video clips and its limited touch functions. Alright, that's all for this video. If you're new to the channel and want to stay up to date with the latest and best in everything camera, photography and filmmaking, be sure to hit that subscribe button. If you're interested in updated pricing on all of the products mentioned, be sure to check out the links in the description down below. I hope you guys keep creating, and I will see you in the next video.